I'm going to handle it a little different. I'm going to take a couple verses and talk about each verse as we go along, and then we'll read the main part. And I'm skipping a, a good chunk of this ninth chapter, mainly because it's dealing with some things we've talked about before, if not specifically, then in general terms. But to begin, the ninth chapter of Hebrews, we'll begin with the first verse. And it says... Now even the first covenant had regulations for worship and an earthly place of holiness. And that's just reminding us that the old covenant had very particular regulations about how the people were supposed to worship God. God through Moses gave these specific Duties and even a precise place where worship was supposed to happen. That's what the, the bulk of that chapter talks about. Is It's comparing Jesus and the tabernacle. And unlike the people that were surrounding the Israelites, God did not want his chosen people to worship God however they wanted to, wherever they wanted to, and whenever they wanted to. God specifically gave them, told them, here's how you're going to worship me, here's where you're going to worship me, here's when you're going to worship me. Specific feasts and festivals. And then in those verses that follows, that's that comparison between the ministry of Jesus today and the tabernacle and how they relate. So the next verse we're going to talk to, I, I said, boy, we've got to talk about this because this always brings up questions from People from time to time. That's verse 22. It says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Now, this question that comes up is why did God demand a blood? Blood is a sacrifice. For the forgiveness of sins. And that's a good question. And if we dig into the Old Testament law, the answers are found in the book of Leviticus, specifically in the 17th chapter. I pulled out one verse. That's verse 11 from the 17th chapter. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I've given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. As a mark and respect for God who created all life, the Israelites were not even allowed to eat any meat that had blood in it. So if you're someone who enjoys like a rare steak, they weren't allowed to do that. Because life is sacred. All life belongs to God. And it says in scripture that the life is contained in the blood. That's why... God required a blood sacrifice as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. But even saying that, God made a way. Because he gave this commandment, these, here's what you have to bring to appease to, as your sin offering. These doves, you took a lamb, an unblenished lamb, a bull. All these things you had to do at certain ways and certain times. But there were poor people in Israel, just like there's poor people in our land today. They could not afford to even purchase a dove to offer at that sacrifice. So God said, if, if you as a person, you as a family cannot afford to purchase the animal required, you could bring a cup of cereal, as simple as that, and that would be your offering to make up for the sins. And all this Old Testament sin Blood sacrifice is anticipating the final and perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God ordained these procedures so that his wrath, his righteous wrath, because God hates evil. A holy God cannot go with unholy people. There had to be a way to get them together. That's the whole idea of the old covenant. So an unholy people could be in the presence of a holy God. So to sum up just those two verses, God gave them very specific place, 
time and ways to worship so they could approach him. That included those blood sacrifices that had to be made so that the unholy could approach and be in the presence of the holy. Holy.